So with enough time, enough dedication, laying these bricks consistently, focusing on income producing skills, multiplication skills, preservation skills, I think the first thing to understand is that where there is a will, there's a way. If you want to become successful, you can be successful. It doesn't matter if you're 16, if you're 14, if you're 22, if you're 30. The moment that you unlock the mental framework that, hey, my life can actually be something more than the village that I grew up in or the construct that my parents are, or the narrative that I've been uh, raised under. And thankfully, I got that data set unlocked at an early age at 16. I realized, hey, my parents were working regular jobs. Argentina had just defaulted right over the last couple of years with their debt. And they were in a situation whereby the country was pure socialism. I looked at America. I'm like, I can literally go and get rich. I can go and build a business. I can go and do things mm -hmm. that I want to do. Now, waiting tables for me was a privilege. Like I would go and make $100 in a night. I'm coming from a third world country. That is a lot of money. Sure, I have to pay for rent and things of this nature, but I was like, whoa, I'm at the bottom of the echelon here, just getting started and I'm making a couple hundred dollars a day. What I need to do is get extremely intelligent. So what I started doing is focusing on unlocking data sets, becoming extremely knowledgeable because I understood that if I wanted to play the game of life, it couldn't just be hustling. It couldn't just be working hard. I needed a strategy and I needed to learn from people that had strategies, piece those things together, find my winning strategy, what it means to be successful, and attack that strategy. And Bitcoin, crypto was part of that strategy. Why? Easy multiplier, low risk, high reward. Most billionaires have white hair. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It takes a lifetime to get rich. Mm -hmm. This idea of getting rich young, it ain't a thing. I am an anomaly. Mm -hmm. I am not the, your status normal. Per I understand that. I accept that. But I also understand that there's a process to get rich. And I understand that process. And I can help people through that process. Now, I'm not the only individual. Now, I don't have all the answers but I know how to build an eight-figure portfolio. I know how to build in crypto. I know how to build in e-commerce. I know how to scale and build digital businesses. And I think that most people, what they need to focus on right now isn't, oh, how do I make a big win? Notice, how do I keep my habits in check? Mm. How do I do what I'm supposed to do every day? People are focused on the output. You truly can't determine whether the market's gonna go up or down. You can't, you, you, like, you can't make that decision. What you can make is the best financial decision, understanding long-term games, right? People are out here, Oh, well, I'm going to make 1% today, 3%. Bro, when you're looking at the charts and you're focused all day, seeing that ticker go up and down, you could be doing other things. You could be actually making real money, mm -hmm. producing cash flow. S excuse me, but the stock market, unless you have some crazy dividend ecosystem, you're not going to get cash flow. The risk reward ratio is just not there right now. So you need to be able to produce money. I think it's not just about the small wins, but it's about the small wins consistently. Yes. And most people, they have small wins, but then they have a big loss. They don't know when to cut their fucking loss. <laughs> so all these small wins, they're gone. So you need to not only eat and bite those little small things, but you need to make sure that you don't get eaten up. Mm. How did you know that drop shipping was gonna take off? Drop shipping is just digital arbitrage where you're taking a product that you don't truly own, a warehouse, a manufacturer owns it, you market it for a markup, and then you sell it to a customer. That markup is basically what you get to keep. So. Understanding that dropshipping is just a model, it, it's always existed and it will always exist. It's understanding where the attention is mm -hmm. because where attention goes, money flows. So where is the attention in 2016, 2017, 2018 on Facebook? 100%, that's where we all spent our days. We were all here playing fucking Farmville, like let's be real. So who's running your ads? Luke, <laughs> very simple. Yeah. So where the attention is right now, TikTok. Where is Luke? On TikTok. TikTok. So where the attention goes, money flows. Position yourself not only to be the best in the industry, to offer products of value and service, but understand where the attention, where the audience, where the liquidity, where the money is, and then you can position yourself there. And I think you can uh, collect some coins. I, I mean, I just got back from Hong Kong and I just met with the top drop shippers in the entire, in all of Hong Kong, and they do about a hundred million dollars a year in drop shipping. So when I have guys that are showing me $100 million worth of annual sales, and then I have a cat here in Miami that's doing $20,000 a month telling me that dropshipping is dead, mm -hmm. there's clearly a discrepancy of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So usually when I look at the information, somebody has a comment or somebody mentions an idea or they, they burst something out, I look at them and I say, what 
experience does this person have to and to validate their claim? Is this person a good source of authority to mention is dropshipping alive or dead? Yeah. The answer is most likely not. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at Amazon, if you look at a lot of these companies, a lot of it is based on dropshipping models and it'll continue to exist. So once I realized that dropshipping was going to exist, that there was a big demand on the internet for products and that the attention was on social media, I capitalized on it. Except now the barrier to entry, right, has been reduced. So people look at dropshipping is dead. No, dropshipping is so alive mm -hmm. that there's so many people trying to compete for that space. So in order for you to compete, instead of being a little bitch, get really good. The ones in the market that win are the best. Winners win and losers lose. So if you're not making money mm -hmm. in dropshipping, bro, newsflash, people are still buying. Yeah. So yeah, let's yeah. say 2014, you heard yeah. about Bitcoin. You didn't buy it. No, I didn't. Yeah. You were given a data set. You didn't do anything with it. Because mm. I didn't trust the source though. I remember exactly. someone Because, told because me. you didn't trust yourself. No, I didn't trust the source. You're of... the source. Mm. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you the mean? The scientific method. You need to put the data sets through a process to test whether they're true or not. Right. And I, did, so I you, didn't test it. The, you didn't test okay. it. You didn't test it. You just discarded it. Yeah, I did. It yeah. was a piece of information that's just neutral, but you had no mental framework to take it through. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you couldn't process that information because you didn't have the data set to process because your hardware was not compatible yet. So you received the information, you just weren't ready. But you can be ready by upgrading your hardware, which requires consistent, persistent, dedicated energy input so that you can upgrade. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like you need to consume books, you need a network, you need to get involved with people, you need to develop hard skills, you need to learn how to sell, you need to learn how to interact with individuals, you need to learn how to balance a checkbook, you need to learn how to manage cash flow, you need to learn all these things. So it's a cumulative of life that allows you to capitalize on the data sets. So it's not just the information, it's the fact that you need to be compatible with that information in order to capitalize mm -hmm. on it. And that is the mind-body connection for data sets. And focus mm -hmm. on leveling up your skills. Now, what are the skills that if you're getting started with your business or if you wanna run a successful business, you need to take in mind? There are three types of skills. First is income producing skills. You need to focus on how to make money. It's fine if you have a vision, it's fine if you have goals, but if you can't feed these goals, then nothing's going to happen. So you need to focus on income producing skills. Learn how to sell, learn how to persuade, and learn how to talk to people. If you can learn these three things, most of your coverage when it comes to selling, producing income is gonna take place, period. Two is your income management skills. You need to be able to manage the money that actually comes in. You need to learn basic accounting. You need to learn basic law, like how do I file an EIN correctly? Mm -hmm. How do I actually open up a bank account the right way? What are the banking rules and policies that I need to follow in order to be in good standing? How do I make sure the IRS understands what my business is doing and that it's completely transparent? So you need to have your cash management skills in check. You need to have your income producing skills and you need to have your estate slash wealth preservation skills, which is learning how to invest, learning how to buy real estate. These are the three pockets, create, multiply, preserve. So you need to learn how to create money, which is very simple, sweat, <laughs> time, energy, and attention. You can't cut it, like you have to put in the hours, but then you have to go into multiplication stage. It's a completely different set of skills. Some people are here and they never get out of the hustle. They're always hustling. But at some point you have to transition, which means you need a different framework of mind. You need different skill sets. What are those skill sets? You need to be more aware of finance. You need to be more aware of your bankroll. You need to be more aware of your expenditure. When you have a lot of money, bro, you're not managing your cash flow and your expenses, assuming that money's always gonna come in. So if you're making money but not multiplying it, you're always giving up your time. Now you're multiplying your money if you don't know how to keep it you're wasting your time when you were creating it. Mm -hmm. So mindset needs to be completely different. You need to evaluate where you currently are in your life and ask yourself, how do I get to the next stage? And evaluate the people that are the next stage and ask them, simple. Ask people, I ask people so many questions. I have my bankers that manage my money, my wealth management bankers. I ask them questions like, hey, do you have like any advice on how I should invest my money? Do you have any advice on like how I should wire money? Do you have any advice on I, how I should talk to other bankers, and I ask these guys for advice on how to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. So what do you need to do? Find those people, put yourself in the right rooms. What do we talk about? Selling, persuading, networking. That is the, the basis. What are you selling people on? 
sell, sell people on the ability to help you. Sell people on the ability to give you the right information to get to the next level, right? It's all relationships. So learn how to create money, build a sustainable business. There's three ways to build businesses, digital businesses, physical businesses, or you can have uh, services. That's it, pick one. Services tends to be low risk, high reward, because it's just a lot of hustle. Like you can go render a service, but you have to expend time. On the multiplication stage, learn how to invest, learn about dividends, learn how to buy real estate. And on the multiplication stage is learn how to build, you know, uh, CDs or cash deposits, learn how to uh, buy T-bills and learn how to buy a little bit more solid, less kind of insanity, some gold, some Bitcoin, buy some other currencies. But these require all different frameworks. And I think that people, what they want to do is all these things at once. Mm -hmm. So they're like, I want to make money, but then I also want to invest the money. I want to get super rich. It's like, no, no, there's a reason why the billionaires have white hair. And that I think is the big premise of this entire podcast. And we can kind of wrap it with that, which is the journey of a glitch, the journey of becoming somebody, it's lifelong. Yeah. So with enough time, enough dedication, laying these bricks consistently, focusing on income producing skills, multiplication skills, preservation skills, and just taking it a day at a time, being authentic, understanding that the system is the system, but most times the system that we cause in the self damage that we cause is worse than what comes from the outside. And if we can regulate these things, regulate ourselves, then we can actually be in control of our lives. We can't control a ton of the variables, but at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you said, well done, what else matters? Hmm.